Well, what do we have here? Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Secret History and Living in Your Aquarium. Looks like we have an unboxing to do. And a nice day at that. All right, let's get to this. It's going to be some tubbing fish and uh, some spawning projects. Yay! Unboxing time! All right, guys. So, let's see what we've got here. We've got a package from Aquatic Arts, my favorite company of online critters. Ah, they've got a picture here of their, uh, their new Red Riding Hood shrimp. You know, I have some of those downstairs. One of my favorites, for sure. So, this is a special request package that I uh, ordered, and I saw what they had in their new arrivals section last week, and I couldn't help myself. I, I had to have it. Uh, I saw that they had rice fish, and I was so excited to see the rice fish they have. Now, these are super hardy fish. Um, I don't even know if they need a heat pack in this package, to be quite honest. These fish in the wild can get near freezing, and they can get all the way up to like 105 or 108 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it's insane. They are a hardy, hardy fish. And right here we have some uh, pearl scale, uh, some of these Japanese uh, white or platinum uh, these are a, just a beautiful silver and opalescent little rice fish. So I've got a group of them here. It looks like they sent me 10 of the pearls, which is awesome. Uh, I said, I'll just take whatever you got and they are perfect for tubbing. Um, they're just an awesome, awesome species. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like they even need to put a heat pack in there. Um, which is really cool. And this package arrived very, very quickly, which is nice. Uh, quicker than normal. You know, Seattle takes some time sometimes. Uh, here we have the real prize, though. And this, these guys are the ones that I am so excited about. These are the red cap Madaka rice fish. And right now they're still stressed, but they will have a bright orange head and then a silver body. Now this is the same uh, species uh, when we're looking at it. Uh, it is the same species of fish and it lives in, they're found in Japan and China and Taiwan and the islands all around that, that region and the Korean Peninsula as well. And they are a fish that can live in any salinity. Isn't that crazy? So they're one of those fish that's kind of uh, it's probably responsible for a lot of freshwater fish, like in this scale of evolution over time. Uh, oh, we got more of the red caps. I am so excited. Ah, these are very, very hard to find. But I, like I was saying, as as evolution over time has has occurred, it's species like this and the sticklebacks and things like that where they can tolerate both salt and fresh water um, that can populate islands and new continents and things and then they get trapped and landlocked and then new species evolve out of um, fish like this. Um, who knows, maybe it was only a few fish that all the cichlids, for instance, in the Rift Lakes evolved from. So, very cool. I am so incredibly excited about these red caps. Uh, they're, they're, the pearls are really beautiful, but the red caps are just something I've never seen in the U.S. before. Um, maybe other people have seen that um, in their neck of the woods. But it's very, very hard to get a hold of certain species of rice fish. Uh, not species, I'm sorry. Strains. They've been kept in Japan for uh, 400 years they've been kept and uh, this last one is a project which will be featuring on the channel too 
as I get to it, this last group of fish. And we've got here Luminatus. Uh, so these are Pseudomagill Luminatus. And uh, they <laughs> they kind of look like rice fish right now, don't they, guys? These guys will color up a beautiful orange-red color as they get older. I needed females. I had some females. I only had a, a small group of them. And uh, wouldn't you know it, they're jumpers. The males were chasing them around during a water change. And uh, I saw them getting all jumpy. But they're in a tank that does not have a lid. So... Um, I thought they were done doing their jumpy thing, and it was just because of the water change. This was months ago. But my last female hopped out at one point, and uh, that was a bummer. But sometimes that stuff happens if you have a tank uh, of fish like like these. But those are the Pseudomagill Luminatus. So in total, we've got these rice fish. So the red cap rice fish, that's one group of them. Here's another group. It's great to me that they sent them in two separate groups because my plan is to have some outside. Uh, I think I'll wait a little longer outside just because I gotta. I want to figure out my raccoon situation. Uh, but but they can live in a bowl, a clay pot, uh, you know, some very small container without any real uh, mechanical filtration. You're still gonna want to set up some sort of biofiltration, you know. Uh, but they're just so adaptable, so hardy, and yet so beautiful. Um, they're really cool. So it looks like everybody has arrived super healthy. I thought I was only getting 12 of these, so thank you, Aquatic Arts. They're known for throwing in, uh, you know, some extra fish for the journey oftentimes. And so we've got the, the pearl scale uh, or pearl white, pearl platinum, however you want to say it. Uh, we'll get these all um, settled, and then we'll get some color uh, footage of them, you know, when they're colored up and relaxed in their new homes. Also, I got a couple plants. I couldn't help myself, so I got some um, uh, super red Ludwigia. I couldn't help it, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, and then I also got some of the gold ovalis uh, uh, plant as well. Um, and let's see. Oh, and they included a hammer, uh, a hammer, a Pawnee Geaton hammer plant, which is rad, 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 rad. Um, it's kind of cool. This one has actually like reddish purple, I don't know, um, whatever you'd call that color, uh, stems, and then the the leaf, it's called a hammer plant because it looks uh, kind of like the Aponegeaton Madagascar lace plant if you have filled in all the holes in, instead of having a lace pattern. But then it looks like a piece of sheet metal that was hammered with like a ball pin hammer, like flattened out. Uh, so I'm really excited about these. I think they also work great for tubbing outside. So if you guys also want to get your tubbing goods going you know you could get some rice fish you could get some cpds or some erythromicrons or uh i mean there's just so many different uh critters that you could decide to get from aquatic arts including shrimp uh if you want to get that stuff going and for tubbing season uh why not choose aquatic arts they're one of my favorites I really like them, you know, it's supporting the independent business owners right now, and uh, they can use it for sure. They're one of the few uh, sources of fish in the country that I really, really um, appreciate how they do business. It's not just that they have all the fish that I love, and they're always coming through with new stock every week, even during this uh, rough time. Uh, they're coming up with new stock. They have awesome selections of... Actually, we can see the color a lot better right here. Uh, and these fish are designed... Uh, they were bred to be viewed from above because they uh, are often put in clay pots uh, out in the, out in the uh, patios or front yard, uh, like front walkway or in a garden uh, in Japan and then viewed from above like koi fish, actually. Um, but now, you know, they've entered our, our lovely aquarium trade, and now they're seen from all different angles, which is 
fine and dandy as well. So, yeah, look at that. We've got some nice critters in these bags, and I am set for tubbing season. Uh, so, like I was saying, though, if you want to pick some of these up, go to Aquatic Arts. I really do appreciate this company. Uh, you know, the owners are very big on supporting the hobby. They buy specialist uh, fish from the hobby, from hobbyists, uh, which is great. It's also why they have had fish after the big shutdowns that have gone on. Um, you know, one of the reasons. And they constantly have really crazy uh, crustaceans and, you know, so invertebrates, basically. Uh, they've got really, really good selection of shrimp most of the time. And probably the biggest that I've seen online selection of different colors of crayfish. Uh, all sorts of different crayfish they have too. So if you've been thinking about that, um, if you, you know, if you like having an Oscar, try a crayfish. I mean, these things, those things can get big and gnarly and mean, and they've got a personality. Um, and then there's other ones that are small and they're not mean. They're, they're just doing their thing. But, uh, they're an interesting creature, and if you've been thinking about doing a tank with one, uh, it's almost like a predatory fish or a snake or something or a scorpion. I don't know, um, but yeah, they're they're very interesting to watch. Now, I am really excited about these things. I hope you guys can tell. Uh, yeah, so they will be in upcoming videos. These little guys, the Pseudomegill Luminatus, they are mop spawners. They are from. Uh, the lovely region of Papua New Guinea. And, um, yeah, so that is the story on these critters right now. Uh, these fish here, they're, they're fine at this temperature. They're just chilling. These guys, uh, I'm going to have to warm up, so we will bring them over to the tank of destiny that they will be in. Uh, these guys are still young, which is great. I see lots of females, which is great. They all look happy and healthy, which is great. Uh, and they're, they're just a fun fish. So I'm excited about that. Excited they're here. And uh, you can check out a lot of the other plants and fish, which I've mostly gotten from Aquatic Arts. If you want to shop with them and get the discount, support the small uh, business, uh, support the hobby uh, in the Midwest specifically, where most of the people who sell to them are based in Indianapolis, uh, Go to their website, check out the link down below, and uh, you guys can get a discount. You can get 15% off, uh, also 10% off for uh, returning orders, and then also we enter you guys into a drawing, and then we do giveaways. And we have given away thousands and thousands of dollars from them through this channel now. Every six months or so, we've done a, a big drawing with a bunch of, you know, $50, $25, $100, uh, and then even like, you know, we did a $300 pack with starter pack for uh, Blue Dream Shrimp and 20 Shrimp and uh, also everything you needed to get going. Um, so we like to do lots of things like that and give back to the community, uh, you know, that supports them. It's a big... It's an ecosystem that we all need each other in. So uh, definitely an exciting time. And uh, unboxing, especially when you're at home, if you've been at home locked up for a while, uh, it, it is like Christmas, you know, to, to get it. Even when, even when you buy it, you know, you're just like, okay, all right, we've got the gift. It's here. Let's go. So I've also got some, some of these plants here, and I'm, uh, you know, I went over those, but we will also plant them, and I will show you what they look like in the future, too. You can check out the gold variegation on these Nicaea uh, ov ovalis ones. Very uh, cool leaves, for sure. And, uh, yeah. And then the other one, you guys have seen the mini... Uh, the mini Ludwigia red, super reds before, but they are a great place to get, uh, also to get food, uh, to get, uh, little, you know, ceramic caves, little doodads, like, uh, um, 3D printed ledges and things like that, whatever it may be, like, accessories for your aquarium, they're always coming up with new stuff, they're always carrying new stuff, most of it is sourced right here in the United States and made in the U.S. or bred in the U.S., which is really cool. 
Um, and so I, I highly recommend if you guys don't shop with them already, which a lot of you do, I know, and a lot of you are real happy about it, I know, and love them as much as I do, uh, you know, give them a shot and, uh, you know, support the hobby, support uh, a group of good, all, everyone who works there are uh, in the hobby themselves as well, and uh, yeah, it's a good group of people and a awesome company to support. We will be featuring these guys very soon. All right, take care. Hey guys, how's it going? We are here later after the fish are settling in, and boy are they beautiful, these fish. These are the rice fish earlier. These are the pearl ones, the Japanese uh, traditional and alongside them there's actually another species of rice fish and this is what they look like more so um, they kind of look like uh, Pacific blue eye pseudomagills uh, if you've seen those they look like those or celebi uh, celebs celebes pseudo pseudom uh, pseudomagills why is that so hard to say uh, stuttering today sorry about that guys uh, but the rice fish uh, the white ones these guys are actually I mean, they're, they're iridescent. They've clearly been selected for for many years. And you see that beautiful blue eye on that platinum body, that white body. Uh, there's this just awesome, like, pearling. And I had to, it di I did a slight double take because I thought for a sec that it was, like, white dots or ick or, like, bad scales. Uh, but it's just actually the scales reflecting so brightly. I don't know if it's picking up on the camera very well. But... Uh, they shimmer just like a pearl. So it makes sense that they're called pearls. Go figure. Naming things in a way that makes sense. All right, so we also have the red cap Madaka rice fish. And these ones, uh, I'm cleaning out this tank right now. It's a bare bottom tank for spawning. But these guys will be going outside after they kind of get their QT going down. And they're starting to color up and get that beautiful orange head that, that they're named for, the red cap. They're in here with some guppies right now. They can tolerate a salinity of uh, anything, basically. But they can also tolerate a really wide pH, which is super cool. Uh, and some of them already, just within an hour, have colored up with that red cap on their head just very nice i can tell within a few days it's going to be even better and of course i'll update you guys with that um and i'll show you guys upstairs under a little bit different light to uh how they're coming i don't know uh actually if the males and females have different uh diff if they if they show the trait differently in this in this line but we're gonna find out uh this this one right here is clearly uh, looking, looking to me like a female and it, it, uh, has that red head trait. So we'll see. Um, there's another one over here that's coloring up already, but most of them didn't have that trait right away in the bag. They're probably just stressed. And it's when it's dark fish, uh, actually don't have the same color as when, uh, they're in the daylight. They, they kind of color down if you've noticed in your tank. But let's hop upstairs, check out the last of the fish that I picked up. Look, even the guppies want to spawn with them. They're so pretty. Uh, it's funny. Uh, so let's go check out the, the other ones. And uh, yeah, I mean, these things are like beacons in the tank. If there weren't a white background on this tank, you could really, really just see how much rice fish stand out. You can get them in orange and kind of reddish colors too. And the natural is 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 very pretty also. It has an iridescence to it. Got them at Aquatic Arts as well. But uh, I have to say, these pearl scale ones are just, and the red cap ones, they're both phenomenal. They're just, they, they look neon. Very cool. All right, let's hop upstairs real quick. All right, so we're upstairs. Same deal with this tank is they're not going to be in here forever. They're, uh, they're, they're just going to be in here until outside is ready, basically. This tank is about 76 to 78 degrees usually. And that's a, that's a bit warm, ideally, for them. They like a cooler temperature. But look at how beautiful these things are just from above. Starting to color up with that orange head also here. 
Uh, it's a little hard to see on the camera, but let's see if we can get a better view of it. Yeah, you can get a better view from here. They're starting to get a peach color, but it's getting more and more orange on them. And just a freaking beautiful fish. Uh, and then there, I actually put one of the plain Jane, quote unquote, <laughs> the pearl ones that are still very beautiful uh, in here, just to kind of um, see how they were doing. And then the pseudomagills are all back there, the Luminatus. And likewise, they're coloring up, they're turning that beautiful orange, yellow, and red color that they, that they turn. And they'll do fine in here, but I'll need to keep the rim, the water down, so that, that they don't jump. Pseudomagills are definitely jumpers, and uh, they like flow, so this will be a good tank for them as long as they don't jump out, and right now I think we'll be fine. Um, we'll have to see how the angelfish handle them, but so far the angelfish uh, bug each other and, and don't seem to, to bug um, other than just kind of some territories. They don't seem to ever go back in here and bug the little fish, but the little fish do seem flighty, so we'll keep an eye on that uh, because angelfish are cichlids and they can be jerks. And same with the pseudomagills. I have never put pseudomagills with angelfish at all. So I'm going to keep a close eye on it. I'll be upstairs working on things all afternoon, and so we'll get a, a better picture of how this is going to go um as time goes on see i don't know that one she's gonna spawn because of the full moon she always spawns on the full moons every other full moon and so i think that's why she's being nippy uh, but you can even see these these ones have like a, a an opaque kind of translucent glow to them like moonlight whereas these ones back here are are really just stark white these are the the uh, the pearl ones these two little ones and they can interbreed, and I would lose, I could potentially lose the red trait in their babies, but um, I'm not worried about, there's only two of them in there right now, and plus I think even though they do carry eggs on their bottom fins, they carry them on their, on their uh, anal fin there, and they kind of leave a cluster of them for a few days, uh, or sometimes, actually, yeah, it can be a few days, but usually at least a few hours, and then they stick them to to a plant or something uh, back in the habitat, but I'm guessing that they will not be uh, spawning in this tank just because the angelfish and possibly the other rice fish can uh, eat them, eat the, eat the little babies pretty easily. But I'm excited. Uh, I think this will be really cool. And like I said on those, uh, on, the, on the pearl ones, they literally sparkle and I had this, check and think is that is there is there a white dot or ick or something no it's it's just how pretty they are so very cool i'm so excited to have all these fish and uh i have more nano fish coming soon so uh it's just a really fun time i'll have a lot of uh fish to spawn and try out in different combinations of things coming up very soon on the channel so stay tuned uh, and of course, visit Aquatic Arts for all your nano fish and crustaceans and plants. Uh, got a bunch of new plants, plus a lot of the plants in here. Most of the plants in here came from them, as well as the angelfish. So stay tuned as they get stock. Right now, pretty much all stock is domestic in the country. I'm, I mean, there's there's exceptions, but pretty much everything's domestic. So um, you know that they're sourcing it from good local sources which is just phenomenal so all right guys i will talk to you later take care of your critters take care of the people around you and of course take care of yourself too or you can't do those other things so i will talk to you later and if half of us do that half the time i think we will have a world that is twice as good goodbye <laughs>